Hello and welcome to Guru Grit. Today we have a very exciting occurrence happening here. My first ever chance to collaborate with someone that I truly admire and I enjoy them very, very much. The wonderful aspiring alchemist from TikTok, real name, Chris Greider. So thank you so much for being here, Chris. I so look forward to our co-creation discussing with particularly your take on what I consider your genius on how we create our own reality. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I watch your TikTok as well and, and really like your messages. So happy to be here. Thank you so much. I think everybody likes watching yours. You have so much, You first of all, you have candor and honesty, but then you also have so much whimsy and humor and your wit and your straightforwardness. It's truly appreciated in an age of information with so much misinformation at the same time. So very, Thank very you. exciting. All right. Now, I was thinking today we could talk about things like success. Like what is success in life to each person? I feel, you know, we put so much emphasis on material success or achievement and accolades. So how can a person manifest success in their life materially or in that regard? And then I also would like to discuss romance. Very, very big topics are always going to be money, usually amongst men, and then love, usually amongst women. At least that's what I've noticed as an astrologer. And so I didn't want to leave either of them out. So how would you quantify success for the average person who comes to you when you're doing coaching? Well, I always break success down as how good a person feels, really. Um, I mean, I think that it's fun to set a target. A lot of people a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I'll be happy when I when I have this kind of house and this kind of family and this, you know, these many kids and this kind of car or whatever. And it's like they're always putting feeling good off until they reach a certain place. And and uh, I think that true happiness actually comes from just like setting a goal and then just like moving towards the goal. Like once you get the goal, it was never even about the manifestation. It was always about the joyful journey along the way, because as soon as you reach a target, you, you get it and you might celebrate for like a, a couple of days or whatever. And then you're just like, now what? But you want to set a new target so that you can have another joyful journey towards something. So I think success, success to me comes, uh, comes with just um, progress, like making progress towards a passion, making progress towards um, a mission of yours. You know, you don't, uh, it was never really about getting it. Once you get it, that's great, but it's sort of just the cherry on top, you know? So and then in terms of, yeah, material success, um, I think it can be a, a little bit misleading. Like it's great, you know, money is great, <clears throat> um, you know, nice houses and all that stuff. It's nice. But ultimately, I think what we're really here for is people are just like human connection. Like, you know, I think um, I actually made a post about this once where I was saying, like, imagine if you woke up uh, one morning and all of a sudden you had everything in the world. You had all the mansions and all the yachts and the cars and whatever. But the reason you had all those things was because everybody was gone. Now you lived in this world all by yourself. And now you get to experience all the materials. And even for the sake of this, you know, um, of this idea here, like, let's say you can even travel anywhere. Like, there's nobody in the world that can fly you in an airplane, but you can just teleport to anywhere in the world at any time. And, you know, at what point would you start to realize that, like, these material things that you were after for so long weren't really as cool as you thought they were because the reason you wanted them was either so that people could see you having them so that it made you feel that you were important or validated or you wanted them so that you could share them with other people mm. right and even if you just wanted to travel the world by yourself the only reason you wanted to do that was because you wanted to see all the different cultures and the types of people you know I feel like what we're really here for is human connection and all the materials and all that stuff is great but it's very secondary yes it, that's why they say it's so lonely at the top and I always stress that we are social mammal. We really, people might think I don't need anyone. Sure, but you prefer them. I think you prefer to have other people reflect to you or co-create with them. Um, it's just more fun. It's more enjoyable. Even, even someone who's like a troll or a perceived competition, because it just <laughs> highlights in you what you could do better and, and motivates you to improve. But you're quite, it's so interesting how we always think that once we have something, we'll um, first of all, people say I get imposter syndrome, so I panic. But then the other thing I've heard said is people will say, I got everything I wanted. And you go, are you happy? And they say, well, no, I feel nothing. Because they, like you said, it's about the progress and they've spent that emotion and then they haven't set yeah. a follow-up target. So it's, um, I mean, we should think of a good analogy, but I mean, there's so many, isn't there? It's just that cliche of, 
you know, the, the, the purpose is the journey, you know, it's, it's never, it's never the destination. It's the joy of the journey. So if somebody gets to the destination and they realize they never enjoyed the journey, it's like, wow, like I just wasted so much time, like on my way here, like, instead of just, you know, taking it bit by bit and like enjoying the, the slow movement toward it, you know, that was really what it's about. And it's like the quality of the journey will determine the destination. So, we're, I mean, Abraham uses vacation a lot as an example, and I can give you one from my own life. I couldn't sleep one night before vacation. First of all, even the booking went wrong. I disagreed with the way the person did it and what they booked. So that was like from the beginning, just a bad seed was planted. And then we got to the airport on time. And for whatever reason, it was when they first rolled out those um, kiosk things, you just check yourself in. This was like the first thing. It was brand new and the lines were really long and they decided not to let people check us in only to take our luggage. So even though we got there with lots of time to spare, we missed our check-in by like two minutes. And we said, wasn't well, there anything you can do? So they hadn't ironed out the kinks at this point. And they said, no, you have to go talk to someone and get bumped onto another flight. And so right off the bat, this was a nightmare. It was like six in the morning. I hadn't slept. I get flagged uh, to be randomly searched, which is very suspicious. Oh my God. It was just a nightmare. They went through my things. They took off my coat. So then by the time we get to our destination in the Caribbean, the driver of our bus to the resort, for some reason, this is so strange, didn't like, it's like, we didn't, we didn't light up for him. So he just drove right past the hotel. And I was like, we've been driving for a really, really long time. So I was like, we should say something. And he was like, that's all the way back there by the airport. And we're like, why, why didn't you stop? And he said, I didn't like realize. So we literally got to, we missed our check-in. It was literally the next day. So we got to our room at one o'clock in the morning. So we missed one full day of our trip. So it's hard to start your vacation on the right foot when you just spent 24 hours like suffering. And then the way home was even worse. It was totally mad. So it's always so interesting. People say, I I'll be so happy let's say when I get married, because I want to be happily married and I'm miserable when I'm single. So I have to like dating and no one makes me happy when I date. And I think you're never going to be happily married because you're not even enjoying dating. And I had someone really wise, a very happily married woman tell me, I said, I don't like dating. I just don't like the pretense. She said, can I tell you something? Marriage is one long date, but you never go home. You're forever dating one person. So you better learn to like dating. So I would say you better learn to like the process of creating what you want enjoying the journey as you were saying or should i say the alchemical process of <laughs> tweaking your emotions to yeah get yeah. what you want pre-paving and all that too like mm. before you you know like um what you were just explaining is like that quote that abraham always says about how um uh you can't have a happy destination like after an unhappy journey you can't you can't have an unhappy journey to a happy destination because by the time you get to that destination you're not going to be happy because you just exactly. went through this miserable experience now you're there imagine you're like imagine you're on this like cross-country road trip and you got to get from one part of the country all the way to the other so it's like multiple days or whatever and the whole time you know it's like you're just upset you're you know it's hot your air conditioner is not working you blow a tire out you know whatever like in the whole time you're just angry like by the time you get to your little vacation spot you're gonna be like exhausted and like you're not really gonna enjoy it you know it's gonna you're gonna like you said you started off on the wrong foot at least mm. you know so I, yeah. I had a very smart friend one time I was complaining about something completely relevant looking back on it like totally pathetic you know and he just went have you ever been on a two hour hike and you were starving by the time you got to the top? And I was like, okay, I'm following. He goes, and the only thing you had to eat when you reached your hand in your backpack was a beaten up granola bar that's probably spent a month in there. When you open it, it kind of burst into powder. I was like, yes. He's like, was it the most delicious thing you've ever eaten? And I said, yeah, it's like amazing. He said, well, your attitude is half the taste, okay? Context really matters. And I was like, it's so true. If you don't have a good attitude, getting the thing that you want, you will never be satisfied. And that's such a big point on personal responsibility because it shows nobody can determine that for you. You know, you can be, mm -hmm. there's mo most unhappy people are in fact like lottery winners <laughs> and very famous and they're not, um, they're not immune to misery or melancholy or depression. You know, you have to have that inner certainty and stability. And then now if we can start kind of splitting hairs a little is in terms of the formula, I find so many people without even realizing or when they start learning about the law of attraction and creating, 
they think, yeah, you know what, you're right. This comes so easily to me. Like I have a friend who's a chronic job hopper and she just goes from strength to strength. She's always worked in her field. She's always been very fortunate. She has no, res she's never happy, but she's very successful and she expects well, that. <laughs> but again, what, 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 my, yes. my, my, my definition of success is happiness. So yeah. <laughs> she's very happy, but she, she's not happy, but she's successful. I'm like, that means she's not successful. <laughs> okay, very good point. You know, exactly what we're just saying. <laughs> and I always say to her, I've always just wanted to work in my field. It's all I've ever wanted. And I said, you've had it since you were like 18. And every job, I always say, you know, how's work? Because she has like this wonderful, powerful position. And she's like, she always says, I hate it. I'm looking for another job. And the funny thing is she's never, do you know, she's never, this woman is 41. She's never applied for a job. She's always gotten it from someone who moved on and recommended her. And she's gone in for the interview and got it like immediately. So I always say, you never try, you get everything you want. And she's like, mm. you know, so some, she has no resistance. It comes very easily like material, but uh, then they will, pardon? an expectation at this point an yeah. expectation is so high it cannot be you know it's it has like full immunity to resistance but then in other areas of life you have to think and feel the same way but you don't so a good one then is money and love people will say i have everything i want here but i can't use that formula here because unlike money people have opinions or they don't listen to me or i can't steamroll them with my willpower so it's like actually you can you can hold the expectation but in your own thoughts you think it's hard so that's why you can excel at manifesting something like bodily health beauty popularity but not other things like paying your bills or having nice neighbors or something so how could how do you help people bridge that or make them see that it is actually quite simple well <clears throat> i always break it down by like you know all you ever want is an emotion like like if somebody's trying to get a specific thing, um, like for instance, you were talking about love or something like that, it's like, I'd be like, okay, break it down in the most simplistic terms of like what you want. You want to feel connection, you want to feel joy, you want to feel um, like, like I, I always talk about just vibrating, like finding way of conjuring that emotion because we get so um, caught up in like wanting a specific thing when really like if you can just generalize like people would find me like being crazy people think I'm crazy but they're like well what do you want in life like what do you want in life and I'll be like mm, like clarity like clarity like uh excitement you know <laughs> excitement excitement would be cool or uh playfulness you know uh friendship uh like yeah but what you don't you don't want like lots of money and I'll be like hmm, yeah lots of money sounds like excitement you know like yeah, yeah. I want excitement. you know I'll be like what you don't want like you don't want like a, a big excite you want a big awesome career and I'm like yeah a big career like that sounds like fun yeah I want fun you know like I want like joy it's like to break things down into just mm -hmm. simple emotional terms and like it's easy to find those emotions because you know all it takes is like five to ten minutes of deliberate focus to conjure the emotion of what you want and when you sustain mm -hmm. that emotion, all of a sudden you start becoming those manifestations that you thought you wanted, they're irrelevant now because you're already feeling what those things are, you think those things are going to give you. But now on top of that, those things chase you because you are now a vibrational match to those things, right? So it's, um, it's a weird flip of just like, finding an emotional place and 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 then and then disregarding like your physical senses really like like mm. if you can feel if you can feel excitement if you can feel um comfort if you can feel clarity and if you can sustain that it also sort of falls in line with like what dr joe dispenza teaches of like helping these people who um you know a lot of his a lot of his students are um people who are healing themselves physically and stuff from like terminal illnesses and things like that but also, you know, a portion of them are just, you know, people who are healthy, but they just want to create, you know, a certain life that they want. They want to, they want to um, break certain habits that have held them back in their life. So he's always teaching them how to sustain an elevated emotion and to live from that elevated emotion. And what happens is like the longer that these people sustain these elevated emotions, the more that they break free from their previous way of life and the more that they open themselves up to the life that they prefer and all those things 
naturally sweep in in ways that you could never orchestrate you know like those mm -hmm. things like the universe all these systems that are at work it's beyond what i can comprehend it's beyond what you can comprehend like all these things will that will find a way to bring you the things that you want it may not even be the specific thing but it'll be the thing that gives you the exact same emotion that you thought that that thing you wanted was and it might even give you an element of surprise and and mm. uh you know something that wasn't so predictable so. isn't that so when people say well how is it going to happen i think that's the best part. You don't have to do it. That's so, isn't it so exciting? You don't have to get, and it's the thing everybody, like let's take an artist for an example. They thought, oh, if I just didn't have to worry about the logistics, if I had an assistant, I could just focus on my art. But that's what the universe is. It's your assistant. You don't have to worry about that boring stuff or if it is boring to you, you know, you just fo focus on what you want. And I, it's so funny. You said people think I'm crazy. When I met my now very good friend and the first time we hung out, um, we went for like brunch and she said, you know what I really want in life. I really want to fall in love and I really want to have my own family. I just like have so much love. What do you want? But at the time I was in, you know, really low place and my job had some very difficult characters. And so the first thing that came to mind was I wanted to feel empowerment because I was tired of like working there. So without thinking, I just went power. And she thought she went, I thought you were crazy. Like I thought you wanted to take over the world or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> I do. But you know, it's like you, if you can't, and actually I conjured the feeling of power. And within months I was out of there. Like it was nothing. It was just, it happened overnight. One day I woke up and I thought, I don't need this. And I was gone. And it's so true. And um, so speaking of that, and then also in terms of relationship, like success in love, like getting the person you want, it's so interesting when you said you you find the feeling you don't focus on the exact thing and so in terms of people so much of the time people want to manifest a specific individual and um joseph murphy has an amazing line i was reading his book in bed and i literally had to sit up and grab pen Power and paper conscious mind. yes he said when you think of what you want he said consider the ideal not the idea so in this sense, let's say the money is the idea, the, that specific person, John Smith or Jane Doe is the idea. Focusing on them might work for some, but it will work much more expediently if you focus on the feeling of having the ideal lover or the ideal relationship. It just makes it come much more smoothly. So, yeah. that, 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 that parallels with um, the Neville Goddard, uh, the feeling is the secret book, you know, because he's talking about how it's not so much our thoughts creating reality as much as it how how we charge those thoughts with our emotion you know so it's like the feeling is the secret and um joseph murphy and neville goddard were actually taught by the same teacher i don't know if you Abdullah. knew that this guy named Abdullah. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so they both kind of went in their own direction of how to present these similar ideas but i actually just pulled up this quote when we were talking about um you know how like you have an assistant like the universe is your assistant or whatever and that just reminded me of this thing that I've heard Wayne Dyer say a whole bunch and I always love this he goes um he's talking about like when you become inspired by some great purpose it says dormant forces faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be imagine that just by moving into the world of inspiration you can activate dormant forces forces that you thought were dead that you thought were not available to you and I feel like that's what happened to me whenever I first got into like this amazing flow, like before I really was in my head about spirituality, before I even like really was conscious about, you know, or even finding the works of these people like Wayne Dyer and Abraham, and Joe Spenza, and Joseph Murphy and Neville Goddard, all this stuff. Like it was before I even was intellectually like understanding this stuff. I just, I just started getting in this flow of like feeling so good and all these little intentions would start to happen in like the simplest ways. I remember starting like being like, am I fucking dreaming or something? Sorry, I'm not <laughs> to be the cuss. but you know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it, things would be weird. Like it started off, I was just getting in this really high place and I was staying there. And, and all of a sudden it would be like, every time I thought of something, for instance, I'd be with a friend and all of a sudden I think in my head, I'm thirsty. And the second I think I'm thirsty, someone's like, hey, you want some water? You know, it's just like, just little things like that. It's like the second I thought of something, like something comes in and like, you know, something, you know, the universe, whatever it is, would like assist me in some way. So when I heard that quote later on, it really struck me where it's like, yeah, like there are like these dormant forces and faculties that are there willing to mm -hmm. assist you, but you first have to like be in resonance 
with them in order to allow or receive that assistance, I guess you could say. You're the summoning force and like the catalyst, which is exactly why people who don't think it's real only manifest evidence that it isn't real. And people who because, do yeah. will manifest evidence that it is. It's that simple. It's like, um, was it Wayne Dyer that says you have to believe it to see it? Yeah, well, he wrote a book called uh, I'll See It When or I, I'll See It When I Believe It. That's it. I'll yeah. See It When I Believe And it's very, very true. And we yeah. were just talking about Neville earlier. He also says in one of his lectures, which is like public domain, anybody can find this anywhere. Um, he says, do you know how many times women have come to me and said, Neville, I want to marry that man. And I would tell them, no, just think of the partner you would be proud of. You'd be proud of the one who put the ring there. And they'd say, I don't want to marry anyone else. I want that man or no man. And do you know what how they many? Dead? Yeah, he said it was. Like, what if they drop dead? Yeah, they yeah. drop dead. Or he says uh, so many times he's gone to weddings and coming down the aisle, the bride couldn't even look him in the eye because it wasn't that man. And only the two of them knew the secret that it was, but it was another man. And so you focus on the ideal, you focus on that feeling and these dormant forces they exist, but like we were saying, if you believe they exist, they aliven and show themselves to you and they get to work. They get to work. I always use the analogy of a watch. I don't know how a watch works. I, I don't even know how Roman sundial works, you know, but I can tell time. And that's my job is to tell time. I don't take it apart and figure out what moves the hands and what makes them tick. That's the universe. My job is to know what time it is. So you just have to know what you want how it comes to you is completely irrelevant, okay? Like most chess masters in the world cannot make a chessboard and carve out pieces from scratch, but they can play chess really well. So just do that, focus on the feeling, do what you do, what makes you feel good. And everything starts to coordinate. To, is that yours? Yeah, the chess thing and, and the watch thing, I think it is, is that it's yours? mine, yeah. Okay. And only, I, I only, still, pardon? I might, I, might, I might use that at some point, but I'll tag you if I ever use Please that. Please do. <laughs> um, you know, I just have to say my sister and my father weren't like taught me how to play chess when I was very, very young. And I used to think I was really bad at chess because my sister is five years older than me. It took me some time to catch on. She was stealing the pieces when I wasn't looking, making me think that I was losing. And it wasn't until I was like in my early 20s that I was like, this isn't that hard. How come I used to lose all the time? And I was like, girl, you're not bad at chess. You just thought you were bad at chess, which proves, you know, so I thought, no, my sister, you know, but um. That's an interesting thing to notice is like what you, it really is like the analogy of the genie. You activate it, you call it, you speak it into, into being, right? And then mm -hmm. if you don't believe it to be true, so it doesn't matter how much you affirm, it doesn't happen because you're doing it from a place that isn't pure and it isn't willing to allow something in. Mm -hmm. And what you were saying before about you have to believe it, like I always say, you know, law of attraction, if that's the term you want to use, like that's the term, I use that term a lot, but I know it can, some people can just instantly write it off. So I use other terms too. I'll be like the universal algorithm or like yeah. <laughs> the, the, the science would break it down as like the reticular activating system where it's mm. like in the brain, you got the system that is scanning information and then it's pulling out the things that you've deemed or important it's like when you buy a new car and all of a sudden you see that car everywhere on the road but you never noticed it before it's like now you know it's always been there but now your brain in the reticular activating system is so there's lots of ways of breaking down the same idea as law of attraction mm -hmm. but i like to say it's like you know if you think that law of attraction doesn't work or you believe it doesn't work then you're just going to receive more evidence that everything is random and chaotic because law of attraction is showing you what you believe so mm -hmm. law of attraction is working but it's showing you that it doesn't work because that's your belief, right? Yeah, it's it's hiding. Or if you if you think it's unfair, if you think it's this, like Abraham said, it isn't always even, but it is always fair. Then you, once right. you start to accept that, then you just start to see all the you know things that you believe the most. So in that sense, it's pretty. Um, it's always accurate. That's what I find. And I find there's different types of people who manifest general things, people who manifest quickly, people who man I manifest with great specifics. I can do that like a surgeon, but when it happens and how is like completely chaotic because I'm of the belief that it's hard. Right. But when it happens, it's like astounding. So it's like, if you just believed it was easy, you'd be astounded all the time. But then habits right. die hard right so but everyone's unique but the overlying the underlying principles and the overtone is always the same for everybody the universe doesn't play favorites it's like math it works if you know how to do math it doesn't 
work better for you or for me or something like that. It's just like, if you're willing to practice, you just get better at it. Yeah. And the more resistant you are to letting those things manifest, the more you enjoy them mm. when you receive them. You know what I'm saying? If it was so yes. easy, then, then it would be like the Midas touch, you know, and all of a sudden it's just like, okay, I want something. I got it. I want something. I got it. But instead it's like, I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. You're pinching yourself off. You finally allow it. It's like, ah, I lived the absence of this for so long. Yes. Now I really appreciate this thing. So, you know, like no our right, or, no right or wrong way about this, you know? Yeah. And that's, what's exciting is that everyone is kind of different and we can observe that in each other and be like, well, you're that type and I'm this type, but it's the same for everyone. Everyone has equal opportunity in the universe. And speaking of the granola bar earlier, I always tell my friends, you know, like, I know you think it sucks now and you're bummed out but food tastes so much better when you're hungry, you know? And like I gave the example earlier of the chest thing, I usually say to people like, I like food, I use food analogies and they'll say, oh, can you cook? And I said, yes, and I think I cook well, but that's not the point. My skill lies in eating, like, cause that's where my enjoyment lies, you know? So if you, if you do the thing you enjoy, you become a better cook because you enjoy eating. You have something to look forward to. So speaking of resistance, it's interesting that in love with specific people, people seem to have a, uh, a feeling of guilt about asking for what they want. They seem to think that they will somehow be punished by universal forces or certainly by society if they set their affections on a specific person. So they will sometimes uh, single out a celebrity because it feels safe because they think it's so unlikely to happen. I'll just crush on that person and practice my remote seduction with one of the Marvel people or something. Or they're going to, you know, say, oh, but that's evil because you're stealing their free will. How would you go about coaching someone through that? Well, I don't know if this is exactly how it is, but my instincts feel that um, if you're trying, I mean, I always advise people to not be specific. Like I was saying before, you want to generate an, a general emotion and then let whatever comes to you that matches that emotion, because who knows, you might have a crush on some celebrity, but you don't know that person. You, you, see, you know, an image of them. You don't know what they're like in real life at all. They might be somebody you have, you have no interest in being with, you know, it's like, uh, you know, sometimes um, <laughs> imagine like you really, really want something, but the universe knows that that's not what you really want. And so you're after and after. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say like you're after this car, you're like, like um, I'm, I'm using this as a, a metaphor. I don't mean a literal car. But I'm saying like, you're looking at this thing, let's say it's a car in this metaphor. And you're like, I need that specific car because da 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 da, -da and like, blah, blah, like this movie star, you know, it's like, need this, the Meanwhile, the universe is trying to nudge you somewhere else because it knows that there's not an engine in that car. And what you really want, what you really want is to drive, right? <laughs> so, so you're like, I need that car. I need that car. But it's going, no, 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 go this way. It's trying to push you somewhere else because it's like, you want to drive. You think you want the car, but there's no engine in it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I advise people to be less specific in terms of like what they're trying, like a specific person. I don't think it's stealing somebody's free will, but I do think that maybe it's something like, you know, if somebody is um, trying to attract or be a vibrational match to like a specific person, it could be something where it's like they move into new life tracks where they become, um, they, they meet that person, they meet, they connect with a version of that person that loves them. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not like, it's almost like they may split into another reality I think we're shifting through realities mm -hmm. all the time quite honestly like but I don't think that they're real realities that are always like occupied I don't think that they're always like physical realities I think that it's potential it's mm -hmm. like it's uh it's information it's energy um I have often talked about this is getting a little like out there now but <laughs> I, I talk about like how what our senses are for instance mm -hmm. um seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting and touching we think that we're living in this very sturdy, very stable, fixed uh, physical world because we've trained ourselves through our physical senses to see, hear, smell, taste, touch that we're now experiencing our world in this very tactile way that we think it's so real and so fixed. We don't realize how flexible it is because all our physical senses are is us in uh, translating information where mm -hmm. we're, we are, um, uh, what's another word for it? Uh, translating and um, I guess perceiving or um, there's another word for it, but, but basically it's like there's infinite information that exists. And then the way that you ex experience your physical reality is how you interpret, that's the word, like how you interpret the information 
through your eyeballs and through your eardrums. But we're so good at it that it's not like we wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to translate information through my eyeballs into sight. And today I'm going to, you know, interpret vibration through my eardrums and turn it into sound, right? It's like we don't realize that that's what we're doing. So it's in the same way a dog can hear something we don't hear. Yes. We don't we don't deny it, but that vibration exists. It's just that the dog is able to tune to it, whereas you know most people aren't able to tune to that kind of thing. Or you know, um, it's possible you can tune to any information. Mm -hmm. All information exists. So I would say, in a way, it's like let's say you're chasing, you're really wanting to connect with this specific person. Let's say that specific person. In that in this current reality wants has no interest or no connection to you like you can tune yourself to the information that already exists of a reality in which you're with a version of that person mm -hmm. that wants to be with you if that makes sense it's, it's very quantum yeah. physics kind of stuff but um, that's good because yeah. again it's the same message which is think of the ideal not the idea yeah. think of the yeah. feeling and can, if i can just say one thing i've observed in my time for women wanting to attract the perfect partner or relationship i have found a common thread and that is women should focus on the feeling of security women tend to feel relaxed when they know that they're stable or safe or that someone cherishes them and respects them so for women if you're thinking of attracting the perfect partner you should if you have a specific person in mind imagine that they make you feel safe and if you don't and even if you do just go to the feeling imagine that you're stable and secure enough that you can have high expectation but at the same time not be defensive and not be worried i remember one one of my friends um said she's like i moved in with my boyfriend they're married now thank goodness they're happily married and never manifested but she always used to say it's going so well i'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop and i would go to bed and pray to god yeah. that she would just knock it off so it worked out for her but you can't be doing that you know you can't be like it's so good or but, is it and be defensive yeah. So just focus on the safety, focus on the feeling of fun. And then that must come to you. Like you said, you must interpret the vibration of that will meet you and you'll start to interpret it with your senses through another person or a wonderful date or that beautiful relationship and so forth. So it really is that simple. The formula is the same for everything, but we to have different. Hmm? No, just to expand on what I was saying, because I feel like it got a little confusing there with what I was saying, probably to the viewers, like, Another way of thinking it is like this. Imagine that, you know, there's a radio tower out there and it's constantly bra broadcasting information, but you're not, nobody is perceiving it into sound until you tune the mm. dial to the perfect place where now it's translating what's being transmitted through this mechanism, which would be your eardrums, your eyes, your physical senses. When you tune yourself to a certain uh, reality, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. when you tune yourself to a certain vibration, you can then interpret th into your physical reality something that you hadn't, that's not usually perceivable to the naked eye for most people. So like you get that tactile experience when you get in that perfect tuning, you know, like um, whenever you had those old uh, like bunny ears. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I broke me some of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are they called? The, the antenna. The on antennas, those old yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to move it just and it's all static. And, but like once you yeah. get it just in that perfect place and you don't move, you know, and now all of it's mm -hmm. like now you're getting that physical experience. And another example that I use and that we've heard Abraham say and stuff like that is like, you know, the whole classic if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? And the answer would be no, it makes a vibration. It makes information. Mm -hmm. It's an experience. But in order for it to make sound, it needs to be interpreted through a mechanism like an eardrum mm -hmm. to create the experience of sound. So it's like we are creating our world by interpreting information through the nerve endings on our skins. It's not like we like, it's not like we're saying, oh, I interpreted this information through the nerve endings on my skin. You say, no, I felt this fabric and it's so soft and it's so nice, you know? So we think everything is so fixed and so, yes. you know, but really that's why we all have our own little realities going on and our own different mm. perceptions and our own different beliefs on things because we're all experiencing our own individual reality in terms of how we physically interpret information yes and this is also why misunderstanding can prevail sometimes because you think that person didn't call me they don't like me so right maybe but maybe they just didn't it didn't occur to them you know you, but you take right. it personally and it's like i tell everybody read the four agreements yeah, <laughs> exactly. We'll fix ever. everything. Um, and there was someone read it else. Five times. <laughs> read it, so yeah, and once a year, just for upkeep. 
Yeah. And then there's um, when you were saying radio, you know, like Jose Silva from the Jose Silva mind method. It's the same thing. He says you just well, he he was basically he figured it out himself. He and then he has the mind method, which he just teaches like remote um, sensing, remote viewing, remote seduction, all that. So they have like mm -hmm. a training program now. I think his um, his daughters are like leaders of it. They're still running his work. I have a couple of his books, but he basically teaches that you you know, and he taught famous. Um, contest winner and law of attraction teacher, Helene, Helene Hadsell. She's this woman in Texas who entered over 5,000 contests and never lost a single one. She used to say, including the house that she lived in, she won like trips, cars, cash, et cetera. She says, results are never denied. They're just delayed. And how much time it takes for something to happen is really up to you if you tune into that thing. So she basically found this man and um, he used to teach that uh, because I think he was a, he used to repair radios. So he figured out if you tune your own frequency, that is what you experience. And if you don't, then you don't. Now you can be hurt over it. You can be happy about it, but you are the deciding power on what you experience based on how you've tuned your perception, which is your vibration, your emotional state, your mental state and all of that. So it's pretty much true for everyone. So there's, um, there's no free will to be taken from anybody else if you decide to have them. But if you want to be happier, just focus on the feeling of the person that you want you like if you wanted to listen to a happy song you would just put on the radio to a cheerful radio station you wouldn't demand that the radio play a song by this pop star in particular and if it wasn't there at the moment that you turned it on you were determined to have a bad day you know like being too specific is like you just want that element you want sometimes like i said you want that element of surprise you want that element of unpredictability yeah. it's like how fun is it to turn on the radio and be like oh my god i haven't heard this song in years like you know i wouldn't have chosen this because i wouldn't have thought of it you know but but yeah, um, there was something else I was about to say there. It slipped my mind. Anyways, I just I just Googled Jose Silva. I'm gonna have to check him out because that sounds really cool. Yes, and um, yeah. I'm gonna do like book series on YouTube. I'll do his, and then he has one called You the Healer. So he was really, really big on people healing themselves. So one thing, when Helene Hatzel, she was in a car accident where her face was completely mangled. Um, she went through quite a few surgeries and uh, this was like four months after she finished his course so she said one time she told the doctor like she had uh, conversations with like a healing spirit guy that would manifest before her and he taught her how to stop bleeding and before going into one of the surgeries before being knocked out she told the surgeon don't worry i'll help you stop the bleeding and so she knew she was going to bleed out and she did it from her like astral state and each and every time she came out of surgery she refused pain medication she would just tell herself that she wasn't in pain and she was discharged quicker than other people healed perfectly compared to other patients because she just learned these things that you are the deciding factor of how things work out for you you know like you just decide you're going Great. to be well no matter what happens you will not be a victim to this circumstance or the other you know, whatever the economy says you're determined to feel stability or prosperity then you will you know um, regardless if your spouse is a morning person and a tea drinker and you're a nocturnal coffee lover it's like if you're determined to live harmoniously that marriage will thrive but you have to decide and you don't need the other person to be on board you know what you put out they have to conform to that it's beautiful that she was able to reach that place where there wasn't an ounce of doubt like it's that's really it, what it is abolishing all doubt like i still have doubts on i i know all this stuff but then there are still things where it's like I've been conditioned since I was a child, just like all of us, into believing like the opposite mm -hmm. of these things that you're you're part of, a, you're a victim to circumstances, mm -hmm. and that you're, you know, um, you know. So, uh, I do remember what I was going to say a moment ago. It was you know, whenever you were talking about relationships and stuff like that, and and love and all that. Um, I just always make first and foremost my own, my most important relationship, my relationship with my inner being, like my relationship with my higher self, like it's way more important to be like making that your first priority and then like sure to have a you know a romantic partner that's great but it's like that person can't be the source of your well-being they can they can enhance your well-being but whenever you make your first and foremost your your main priority your connection to spirit you have that relationship but most important and then this other person comes in to enhance it but you you'd want to also attract somebody that also makes their mm -hmm. first and foremost importance their connection with their higher self because you know then you know it's just like the whole abraham thing of oh let's yeah. your marriage vows should be you know i like <laughs> you pretty good let's see how this goes you know yeah, <laughs> like, day by day like, that's yeah it. exactly yeah. yeah 
I that's I love that and that's so true it's like when you're your own best friend the world has no choice but to conform and show you that it's your friend as well so it's very very nice I just love that as, and, and when you're talking about doubts I thought yeah I've got some of those too and then sometimes I think but they're like my friends and I just love figuring them out. It's like fun. Yeah. I don't want to let them go. And so yeah. my last question for you is one that I figured out, uh oh, I'm one of these people, which is basically in my twenties and my mid twenties, uh, I became obsessed with like all natural everything. And I don't know what I did to myself at that point, but I developed like, I never had acne as a teenager. I got it in my twenties. And in the, my fixation and fixing that problem, because I'm a very extreme personality type, it took me years to realize I'd made it my hobby. Like I'd made problem solving a characteristic and it was so hard for me not to think that way or live that way. But then it if just- If you're a problem solver, if you're a problem solver, you're always looking for problems to solve, you know? It's and like, I'm so good rather, at it. <laughs> rather than being like a solution seeker, you could just be a solution allower. You know what I mean? Just yes. like just that small shift of like, yes. oh, I'm a solution allower. I'm not seeking solutions because if I'm seeking solutions, I'm seeking problems to solve, you know? Mm -hmm. Such a small little thing you can change there. But so nuanced and it's yeah. so true. And then the ego thing that would come up is then, but then I would lose who I am. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, you're, you're more of who you are because you've evolved. You didn't lose anything. You know better now. You know, like they say, people who know the most are more likely to forgive. And I would always like, you know, I would always be like, mm, no, that's for suckers. And I'm like, no, but they, they're hurt. That's why they're that way. Now, you know, better you like grow. So yeah. with, with then manifestation, it would just take another form. It's very sly. You know, the mind is very, very clever and cunning. So it would just say, oh, now I don't look for problems because now I'm, I'm an attractor and I know what I'm doing. And then you'd be like, wait a minute. Now I think of attraction the same way I thought of as like, health is a hobby and i was bored if i was healthy <laughs> i had to have something to think about there was always another cleanse or something you could juice like some type of grass or weed you know so i was like yeah that's so true now when you think about <laughs> you know it just never ends so i thought yeah and i and, and then i did it with how i used my mind i thought well if i want to attract let's say i want to attract money it's so fun to acknowledge my crippling financial situation but then the money didn't come and it's like, nah, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You have to only focus on what you're willing to have. Like if you want wealth, you cannot acknowledge struggle. Okay. You just have to train yourself day by day, little by little. Yeah. And you when you think about the abundance that you have in general, like the abundance of mm -hmm. cells in your body that are working on your behalf, the abundance of, uh, you know, water that's available to you, the amount of whatever there's, you know, there's in, like, I look outside and around my window right here and I see like, a huge abundance of trees and if I look down there's abundance of grass and leaves and like everywhere you look is abundance if you just if you just mm -hmm. generate the feeling of abundance money will be one of those things within exactly. the mix you know? so, yeah yes and then you think but what if it doesn't and then you're like oh that's fun because then I can think of a backup because now I've made doubt and resistance my friend because I'm looking for something to fix right like people will always find a way why they can't have what they want but then when you figure out you're like that's just a part of the journey so then i learned to make friends with that and then resistance has no choice but to die and then it breaks loose and what you want comes to you but i feel like then i change my focus let's say from money to opportunity and then it just defaults to that setting until you're aware of it and then you make it so that's how you work through doubt what's your process like that's for me i just think oh my god i'm doing it again but that's just a part of my personality but it doesn't have to be you know how do you yeah. work with doubt? I normally just kind of change the subject. So like, but Chris, you can't have that. You're like, so what do you want for lunch? You just sort of like ignore it. That's the best thing to of, do. I just think of something good going on and, and, you know, and then whenever I'm in a good feeling place, cause that's not the time to work on your doubt is not when you're feeling it. So, you know, it's like when a doubt creeps in on something or a fear or a whatever, it's like, okay, like I see this. And also like resistance is a good, is a good thing. You came here hmm. into this physical world so that you could experience resistance. Otherwise you would have just stayed pure, yeah. you know, pure energy where there's no resistance. It's like you came here so you could have resistant moments so that you could then, you know, allow the new preferences that were born out of that absence of that desire that you want, hmm. you know? So it's like, the granola uh, bar. yeah, exactly. 
Um, but um, yeah, I think, you know, if a doubt or a fear or whatever comes in, I'll try to change the subject and, and think of, you know, what's going well, because there's so many things going well, um, you know, especially when you think like, what's going terribly wrong in this moment for me right now? Like most of the time, if you stop and get very present, you're like, there's actually nothing happening in mm. this moment. Like I'm safe, I'm here. Like, you know, you can start to, so, so I'll change the subject. And then whenever I'm feeling really good, I think my inner being or higher self or whatever will like, will because all of a sudden, whenever I'm feeling like really good, then the topics that I have resistance to will like come up. But mm. I think, I think it's like my inner being like, here's this thought now deal with it because you're in that receptive mode. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, okay. So now I'm feeling good. Now I can look at this thing that I have a problem with and kind of soften it. You know, I can, I can yes. ease, I can ease out some of the resistance. I'm not going to get it all out, but I, mm -hmm. that's why I do focus wheels and that's why I do other techniques, but just taking something and taking the specifics out of it, slowing it down, staying general or start, sorry, staying negative, but going general negative instead of specific negative. You know, if you have a doubt, I mean, if someone's trying to attract like a romantic partner or whatever, if they have doubts and fears about that, whenever that, like, let's say they get into a good feeling place and then they think about that topic rather than having all the specifics of, oh yeah, all my relationships have been terrible and it's been seven years since my last one and <laughs> da, 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 like all these specifics, generalize it, but generalize negative, be like, I'm not where I want to be, like in terms of a relationship. Yeah. then then generalize it even more be like I'm sure somebody else has been here and has figured it out like mm. you know you start you're just yeah. talking yourself you're talking yeah. yourself in to believing it's possible it's not it's not like and you're not going to immediately get good momentum going but you're going to slow down unwanted mm -hmm. momentum and just yes. take the specifics out and generalize and and, and find ways to soothe it yeah soothe yeah. it so Thank you so much. That's pretty much everything anybody will ever need to get whatever they want in life. I really appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you for being here. I hope in the future we can get into other specifics. And if you're willing, yeah. I would love to get into technique. I love the Bashar sort of explanations. I would love to do one on just those because I you have a very good way of explaining things. You're very like visual. So I think that would be so helpful and instructional for people. So thank you so much, Chris. If you're interested in getting a session with Chris, you can find him, DM him on Instagram, aspiring underscore alchemist for details. He does do coaching sessions. Thank you so much. And until next time. Thanks. It was great. Uh, great chatting. Thanks for thank having you. me. Cool. I'll see you out there. See you.